Thank you, Senator Udall. Senator Chambliss. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and welcome back to both of you. Um, General Petraeus, I feel like I've welcomed you back so many times that when you finally do retire 15 or 20 years from now, we're going to have to get you back just to report on something. But uh, it's just um, uh, an indication of the great leadership that you provided, and thanks to you. And as you get back, uh, express to all the troops serving under you how much we appreciate their great service. I'll do it, Senator. Um, you've already talked extensively about uh, the training situation, and I'm not going to ask you to repeat anything there. Uh, and I heard your comments earlier about the progress you're making on the literacy program within those uh, training programs for both the police and the military. And that's such a great step in the right direction when we ultimately do um, turn the uh, total security force over to the Afghans to take care of themselves without being somewhat more literate than what they are today. We all know that it's simply not going to be possible on their end. So I'm encouraged about what I hear, and um, I'm glad to hear my friend General Caldwell continues to do the great job that uh, I know he has been doing under your leadership. Um, you know, this war is um, um, not very popular among the American people. It's no different from any other war. No war is popular. But it has been absolutely necessary from the standpoint of ridding the world of terrorists and bringing Afghanistan to a point to where it cannot be used as a safe haven for terrorists. But as we look back today, after spending almost a decade in that part of the world, we see a government that is rampant with corruption. The, the stability of the leadership is questionable. There's arguing back and forth among the, the parliaments there now, and they're not even able to elect a speaker of their parliament. Uh, the economy in Afghanistan does not have the luxury of the economy in Iraq because uh, there basically was no economy, um, whereas Iraq <laughs> did, does have an oil-based system. Uh, the education system in Iraq, uh, excuse me, in Afghanistan um, uh, is, continues to be very weak, even though we are seeing improvements. And I say that to ask both of you just to comment on the fact that what kind of shining light or hope can we give the American people about the future of Afghanistan when we are gone completely in some period of time, which is likely to be not far down the road from a military standpoint, and um, Secretary Flournoy, we're particularly going to have a lot of civilians, DOD civilians, as well as State Department civilians in Afghanistan for a long time to come. The safety and security of those individuals is of great concern to us. So having given that glowing outlook on what I see happening in Afghanistan right now, I'd ask for both of you to comment as to where we go in the future. Um, first of all, Senator, if I could. Uh, I'd like to go back to September 2005, and I was coming home from a second tour in Iraq. Uh, it was 15 and a half months as the, standing up the train and equip program. And Secretary Rumsfeld asked me to detour and come home through Afghanistan to look at the train and equip mission there and really at the situation more broadly. At that time, levels of violence in Afghanistan were very, very low. It was the, described as the, quote, war with, that we were winning uh, and so forth. Uh, the truth is that I came back after looking at it because of the various challenges. You could just feel how difficult uh, various aspects of this were, and you could also sense that the Taliban was beginning its comeback. Uh, I went back and reported, in, in addition to various observations on the train and equip program, that I thought that this would be the longest campaign in the long war. Um, now, that didn't elicit wild applause in the third floor of the Pentagon, as you might imagine. Uh, it was a pretty sobering assessment, uh, but it is something that I stand by. Uh, and the reason is because of these various challenges that, that accrued over 30 years of war in a country that was when those wars began among the three poorest uh, in the world. So this is, there's no question about the difficulty of this endeavor. Uh, and I think it is understandable, again, that the American people uh, could be frustrated that we've been at this for 10 years. Uh, and, you know, we haven't won yet. Uh, on the other hand, as both the Undersecretary and I mentioned, uh, we hadn't gotten the inputs right until really just in the last six months or so. 
Uh, last fall is when we assessed that we finally had the organizations uh, necessary for the conduct of a comprehensive civil military counterinsurgency campaign, all the concepts, plans, directives, ideas, the staffing of those organizations, and then above all, the levels of troops, civilians, and funding, uh, together with the gradual growth of the Afghan National Security Forces that turned into much more rapid growth. There's no question about the challenges. Uh, again, uh, whether it is in illiteracy, lack of human, cap human uh, capital, uh, human capacity, uh, governance capacity, and the rest. But I would submit that there's no question about the progress in these areas. Let me just give you one really important metric. Under the Taliban, there are less than one million Afghan children in school. Uh, this coming academic year, the Minister of Education projects that there will be 8.2 million in school. And the growth from last year to this year will be the largest of any year uh, since uh, the liberation from Taliban rule uh, in late 2001. The fact is that there's been progress in every component of the comprehensive campaign, but the fact is also is every component has been very, very challenging uh, and very diff difficult. And by the way, they have elected a speaker, I'm happy to report, uh, and they're actually now selecting committee members and they're reasonably along in that process with their parliament. Uh, certainly, democracy in Afghanistan at times can be uh, noisy, uh, if you will, but I think that's probably true of some other countries on occasion as well. I would just add to that, that as we think about uh, the future and how this um, partnership will go forward, I think there's tremendous strength derived from the fact that we really do share the same goals. Fundamentally, the core goals are very strongly held um, by both the United States and Afghanistan. I think there's all, I take heart from the tremendous resiliency and patriotism and dedication of many of our interlocutors, many of the ministers, many of their deputies, people who have suffered 30 years of war and who are just absolutely committed to reclaiming their country, to rebuilding capacity and reasserting their sovereignty. Um, and then the, what really, if you really want to get a boost, uh, go talk to the next generation. Meet with the students who are now back at school, coming out of Kabul University, coming out of other universities, who are not leaving, even though they could, uh, but who want to make a future in Afghanistan and, and change Afghanistan and create the kind of um, uh, country that they think is possible with the, our help and the help of the international community. So, I, you know, I think we tend to focus on the challenges, and they are significant. Um, but the more you get out and talk to the people who have chosen to stay, and why they're staying, and what they're committed to doing in their country, it gives gives you great hope. Uh, General, just quickly, those, those numbers on the children in school is pretty impressive. Uh, that one million that were there when uh, in, in school uh, under the Taliban rule, how many of those were female versus how many, what percent are female of the 8.2? And, and thanks for pointing that out. It was a very, very small percentage uh, that was female under the Taliban, needless to say. Uh, and now it is a very considerable number. We'll get you the exact number, but I think it's in the neighborhood of 30 to 40 percent. Uh, so it's that significant. I might add as well, by the way, that the percentage of females in the Afghan parliament is something like 10 percent higher than the percentage of females uh, in the U.S. Congress as well. Thanks again for your leadership. Except for that last note, thank you so much. I wish that. Uh Everybody had heard all of your testimony this morning, but particularly these, these last comments in response to 